1970s forgotten toys in America. Interested to see what kind of toys was around in 1970. Before we do, I appreciate if you guys can hit that subscribe button. Let's jump straight into this and check out these toys. There is no doubt that the 1970s was a different time. Oh yeah, for sure. Anyone who looks back at some of the photographs from that decade can quickly see how crazy the clothes, hairstyles, homes, and of course the cars were. Mad. Hey, the clothes is coming back though, I ain't gonna lie. It really was a great decade to experience. Even the toys that we enjoyed were a bit different. Well, I recognize this guy. In this video, we will have a look back and remember some of those that you may have forgotten about. Oh, come it. Yo, you guys definitely gotta let me know which one of these toys you've had. That will be really cool. Long before Grand Theft Auto or even Pole Position, there was the Drive Yourself Crazy game. Huh? This analog game provided hours of entertainment, and for many kids, it was Yo! their first start in perfecting their driving skills. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, you actually steer, like, the wheel here, and you move in the game? Wait, that's sick. <laughs> In the 70s, every little what kid I... loved Fisher Price's Little People. They had many different play sets like the Auto Garage or this one, ah, the Castle. That cool. It had doors, windows, ramps, stairs, and so much more for little hands to explore. Would it, was that like your version of Lego? <laughs> Interesting. The original Weebles were an egg-shaped toy that many kids loved. These. They were incredibly sturdy and they also had a catchy phrase. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Are these the same toys where, like, you can half them, and then there's another one inside, and you do it again and again, and it's just, there's loads inside, or no? If there is one company that helped pave the way game for Boy. Nintendo's handheld Game Boy, yep. it has to be Mattel. They had simple handheld games like huh? this one with only nine buttons and an LCD screen. Wait, what? At the time, these were great to have in the car on long road trips, and they were highly entertaining. Bro, I never had this Game Boy before. <laughs> what is this, bro? If you happen to still have the Fisher-Price pocket camera and you want to pass it down to your grandkids or great-grandkids, then it's probably going to confuse them. Right. There is a high probability that they have never seen a 110 camera or a flash cube. I don't know what that is. Wooly Willy was a magnetic game that helped young boys experiment with facial hair long before they could even grow any. Oh, wow. It had a magnetic wand that would pull the iron shavings over the desired area for different hairy situations. Yo, that's actually a cool game. I don't want that now, bro. <laughs> the quick shoot turned kids into rootin' tootin' marble shootin' sharpshooters. Okay. This good old-fashioned fun is a great That's way to cool. pull kids away from their screen and experience something from the past. Right. Bro, that was cool. The Super Spiral Graph was a favorite for both girls and boys. This edition contained more spinners than the average Spiral Graph, so you can make even more cool patterns. Wait, what? Chances are, kids would love them if they were just exposed to them, and you'll love showing them what you used to do. What do you do with it, though? The Astro Ray Gun was a weapon that was powered by friction and shot off sparks when the trigger was pulled. What? If you were really excited about this toy, then there's a good chance that you wore a fishbowl on your head while running around firing the gun in your yard. Yo, out of all the toys we've seen, this is the toy that I would have, bro. This was sick. I want it now. This next toy may seem silly to be on here, but I can't help but mention it. Right. Legos. Lego, yeah. Yes, of course they are still around, but there are zillions of more colors, shapes, sizes, and themes than there were in the 1970s. Okay. Mate, this is meant to be forgotten toys. Lego's definitely not forgotten, my guy. <laughs> this particular old box set required you to use some real imagination in your different. creations. In the 1970s, this would have been our first-person shooter game. It looks like a carnival game. It was the game. next best thing to going to the fair. Right, yeah. Tommy had quite a few of these little pocket games on the market. That's cool, though. The 70s was all about knitting, and little girls also wanted to get in on the hobby. Right. Mattel came out with oh. a knit magic toy, and soon everyone was receiving knitted gifts at Christmas, birthdays, and special occasions. Wait, that would actually have like a proper like sewing machine inside? Like you could actually knit with that machine? Wouldn't that be dangerous for kids? We may not have had our own Google Chromebook as kids in the 70s, but we did have our very own laptop. 
The Fisher Price Learning how? Death Set was how most of us learned how to spell. Today, this might confuse kids as they Wait, try to yeah. match the letters instead of typing them. What? At one time, we were really encouraged to be creative with the types of toys that we had, and right. Light Bright was no exception. Kids were happy and content, poking colored pegs into the black paper as a light behind it transformed their creations into colorful works of art. Wait, that sounds cool. Remember how entertained we were with kaleidoscopes? Nope. These were simple little oh. toys that let us look at our surroundings in a completely different way. Yo, okay, we finally got what I actually had, bro. I had one of these scopes. Yeah, they was fun. They was actually the interesting fun. interesting thing about this toy was that you only needed one eye to enjoy it. Right, yeah, I've got one bad eye, so yeah, I could just use my left eye. Cool. <laughs> I'm all Cash good, registers were at every store when we were kids, and they looked a lot more similar to this than they do today. <laughs> this cash register was a toy that was made by Fisher Price, but kids loved it and it kept them busy for hours. It's like a gambling machine. What house in the 1970s didn't have these? Raggedy Ann and Andy. They were Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, bro. These um my grandma has like a a like one of these. It, it, it's not this, but it look it's kind of something like it, right? I just had it for like 50 years. Bro, it freaks me out like I, I, there's just some creepy vibe to it bro i don't know if you guys get the same feeling but these kind of like 1970s 1960 80 toys uh the dolls bro i don't know what it is but they're creepy man we're they're simple little pals with yarn hair but they definitely are not something that you see kids with anymore oh yeah you don't know no over the years, Parker Brothers has had a lot of fun games. What card games? Payday was one of those, and for many kids, this was their first introduction into the world of an adult. Okay. It was a whole lot more fun when you were playing with paper money and dealing with make-believe scenarios. Sounds good. Sounds like another version Today, of Monopoly. there are many different generations that know about Transformers, but that's probably not the case with Micronauts. They were in a league of their own. What's that? These little articulated action figures are due for a comeback. Well, what were they? You could just Perfection like change them. was a super fun game, but it may have given many kids anxiety disorders in their adult <laughs> life. In order to beat the timer and avoid the popping scare, you had to remain as cool as a cucumber under pressure. Oh, wow. It was the perfect game to hone those skills if you wanted to grow up and disarm bombs. What? <laughs> If you couldn't get your hands on an Atari, then perhaps you had the Telstar video game system. Never it heard of it. It was made for sports fans and gave users the opportunity to play electronic tennis, hockey, and handball long before Nintendo gave us the Wii. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. When the Simon Memory game came out in 1978, it quickly became a coffee table favorite. This little game tested your memory skills, which seems to be something missing in modern games. All right, this is kind of like a different version of Bop It. Do you guys know what Bop It is? Very, very popular in the UK, even now, bro. And it's like a little handheld de device. And it's like, twist it, smack it, pull it, right? And then you got you got to like remember it. You know what I mean? So yeah, that, bro, these games are always fun to do. Even now, this game would be fun. If you've ever seen younger drivers pulling up to an intersection with stop signs, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> the Fisher Price Medical Care playset inspired many kids to become doctors Yo, and nurses. Fisher Price makes most of these toys, don't they? Where they now? Nurses. There were many kids who treated their teddy bears, and if you had one of these, then you can certainly remember hearing a heartbeat that through cool. the stethoscope. Wait, how? Wait, For be more freaky. than five years, Starsky and Hutch and their trusty Gran Torino graced our television screens during the 1970s. Kids pretended to be them, and this little RC oh, wow. car was a blast racing it around in the driveway. That'd be cool. As you look back at some of these toys, it's almost amazing to think how the simplest things entertain kids. You know what? Toys... I bet these would be worth so much money now. I bet they would, right? Like these kind of old toys, like if they were sending the packaging like this. It's almost amazing to think how the simplest things entertain kids. These dancing Mickey Mouse toys would move when you pressed a button. Huh? They were certainly a favorite in the car on cross-country road trips. That's cool. 
What kid didn't have a Mattel Jack in the Box toy? Nah, this was this scary, might be bro. the single reason why so many people seem to be scared of clowns. Yeah, nah, this was scary. It was a perfect... I'm scared of clowns, but I am terrified of things that, like jump scare, bro. If you guys watch my other channel at all, I've got like two horror videos on there. Bro, I am just screaming the whole entire... I'm not good with horror, bro. And you guys want more? Stop! <laughs> like, I've done one, and you guys just keep asking. If you haven't seen it, link is in top of my description. Yeah. Bro, I get so scared about it. It's not even funny. Toy for those that wanted to scare the crap out of their cat or their yeah. younger sibling. Oh, me. Hell no. Nah. If you have granddaughters or great granddaughters that are into Barbie dolls, then perhaps you may want to look into getting this couple on eBay. Okay. There is no way that they will know who Sonny and Cher are, and the no other clue. little girls may think that these are the coolest Barbies ever. They're Barbies? One of the biggest names in the 1970s was Evil Knievel. He inspired us to jump our bikes on death-defying ramps out in the streets. Right, yeah. I've seen videos of what you guys get up to in the 1970s when you was kids. Yeah, you guys are crazy, man. Crazy. I've seen a video of pictures of so a kid on their bike jumping a ramp with, like, five kids laying down and he's jumping over them. Bro, what? <laughs> But there was also a line of toys that many kids wanted as well. Oh, wow, cool. There were action figures, funny cars, and motorcycles, just to name a few. For many people, Evil Knievel toys will represent a childhood when we looked up to a stuntman. Right. That's cool, though. Way before VCRs oh, and Monopoly. Netflix, we actually had a family game night, and it was a ton of fun. Monopoly's the so classic good. Ants in the Pants game is easy to learn and perfect for little ones. What'd you have to do with that? This building kit was for Milton Bradley and it was called the Constructo Straws. The set came with a variety oh, wow. of bendy straws and plastic pieces to attach them. It was another way for kids to learn how to think three-dimensional. Wait, that's really cool. I'm surprised that Hungry, in the game Hungry now. Hippos oh, was I, a simple- I had this game. I had this game. This game right here, Hungry Hippos. Oh, you can't beat, it's so good. Game that came out in 1978. Wow. It's just as fun now as it was then. So if it you is. still have one of these, then break it out the next time there's a family get together and let the games begin. I used to play it all the time at my grandma's Tommy's all the Tudor time. Tommy's Tudor typewriter toy was just like the one that mom and dad used, and it even made the signature ding sound. Oh, really? This little That's toy cool. was how many kids first learned how to type. If the weather was bad outside, then Boogle. it was the perfect time to try your hand at playing Boggle. Boggle. You never knew how fast time could fly until you tried to find words and anagrams with random letters that it spit out after being shaken. Okay. It will definitely boggle your brain. <laughs> nice. The Bionic Woman board game is a perfect example of what is not around anymore. It was another classic from Parker Brothers that was based off the television show. This game challenged kids to use her methods in order to get things done. Bro, that actually sounded like a good game. There like will it would be played be today. The great debate on which decade was the best. However, Wait, let's have that in the comments. In the comment right now, growing up, what decade is the best to grow up, bro? Let me know in the comments. What decade? Or if you personally experienced this decade, then this one might be your favorite. Right. If you still have some of these toys, then consider yourself fortunate. Yeah, I wonder if Mostly you do. you've had the opportunity to share them with your younger generations. I wonder if, like, these toys will be worth quite a bit now, you know what I mean? What were some of your favorite toys in the 1970s? Well... Let us know in the comments below. My favorite toy from this video is the only one I kind of experienced was the Hungry Hippos. So that's the only one I played, so I'm going to have to say Hungry Hippos. But definitely let me know which ones did you guys enjoy the most in the comments. I'm sure you guys experienced a lot more than I did. I just pretty much just experienced Hungry Hippos, but that was a great game. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on Twitch. I TV forward slash L3WG if you guys want to check me out over there. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.